Hero with a thousand faces. What does this mean? In one sense, there is a story that the human being has been repeating over and over and over ever since we were able to articulate stories. And at the center of that story is a heroic figure. We might call that heroic figure the hero. We might call that heroic figure the heroine. We might call that heroic figure a heroic team or a collective or ensemble. But in a sense, the hero with a thousand faces represents the many, many masks that that heroic presence has put on throughout history, throughout time, and throughout culture amongst groups of people who have never met each other around the world. There's something in the energy of that story that continues to rise up in human beings, and I believe will continue to rise because it speaks to our own psychological development and movement as humans. And when you say masks, are you talking about sort of the fact that we all have many sides to us? Even uh, someone that's heralded as a saint can also have sin in them as well? Absolutely. There are masks that we put on in order to um, in order to walk through different seasons of our life. Sometimes we, we must put on a mask that protects us from the elements in the hot sun. Other times there are masks that are aspirational. They speak to that which we would like to be. And sometimes when I meet new people, I put on a mask in order to project who I want them to believe I am. The same is true in storytelling in many ways. We create many characters that represent one type of human experience. I'll give you just a, a bit of a breakdown of this. Many times when we think about storytelling, we forget that throughout history, there have been a number of different types of stories that have served different purposes. There have been myths, fairy tales, parables. One of my favorite types of storytelling are fables. And fables have a unique application in the human experience in that when you and I hear a fable, we often identify with a singular character because we live in a Western culture where we tend to find one character that we most identify with. Let's take a fable like uh, the um, tortoise and the hare, something a lot of people are familiar with, that this turtle and this rabbit run a race. And we listen to that story and say, well, I guess I need to be like the turtle, slow and steady wins the race, and don't be like the hare who uh, becomes lazy at the end. However, when someone like Aesop would have shared that story, Aesop would have recognized that his audience would have heard that story and saw both of those characters as being inside of them. That inside of me is both a tortoise and a hare. And sometimes that tortoise energy is going to be what's important to me, but I also have this hair energy inside of me. And it's about finding the balance and the way to, um, to, to move with both of those energies. So I think when we talk about any form of story or storytelling or mask that we might put on a character, we also can recognize that in a sense, if I create a story filled with characters, every one of those characters is an expression of me. It, Carl Jung talked about when we dream, all the characters in our dreams are us. We are represented by each one of those characters. So in a sense, every story is an invitation to go deeper inside ourselves. How do you define a hero? Joseph Campbell talked about a hero being someone that was willing to sacrifice 
for something larger than themselves, an idea that's larger than themselves, a principle that's larger than oneself. And I think that in many ways is how I define a hero as well. A hero, in my opinion, is not necessarily defined by what that individual gains, but also what they're willing to give up, what they're willing to sacrifice. In storytelling, we often talk about these four types of endings to any story, where a hero or a protagonist either gets both what they want and what they need. Maybe they get what they want, but not what they need. The third type being they get what they need, but not necessarily what they want. And the fourth, a story where the hero gets neither what they want nor what they need. And there's examples of each type of, of story throughout uh, the history of storytelling. But when we talk about what a hero truly is, I think in our culture, we're talking about someone who is willing to give something up. Someone that is not so narcissistic or self-centered that everything has to become about them. I think in storytelling, when we talk about heroes, there's a psychological need inside of every one of us to feel like we're a good person, to feel like we too have heroic elements inside of us. And if we are going to confront those heroic aspects of ourself, we have to be willing to confront those sacrifices that we may have to make in life. What am I willing to sacrifice for? What am I willing to give up that which means a great deal to me in order to achieve? Many of us would say, well, I'm willing to sacrifice for family or for those that I love, and that's honorable, that's noble. But what about those who are willing to sacrifice for those that they've never met? What about those who are willing to sacrifice for a principle that they so strongly believe in, they're willing to lay down their very life so that that idea might progress forward for the rest of us. I think most of us would say there's something heroic about being willing to do that. So when I think about what a hero is, it's not simply what someone is able to achieve externally or what even a character is able to achieve externally but it's also about who that individual is, their character. I, I think heroism is not necessarily something that we can see, but we can see the fruits of it. We see the action that results from heroism. But true heroism lives in the heart. It lives inside of someone. And many times it lives inside of someone or inside of a character and they're unaware of it until the appropriate, precise moment opens up the opportunity for them to fully express that heroism that they didn't even know was living inside of them. Is every protagonist a hero? It's interesting when we begin to look at the terms we use for central characters in story. Sometimes we use the word protagonist and the word hero interchangeably. Other times, I think we are very careful about the words that we choose when we describe the characters within a story. This, of course, opens up discussions about anti-heroes and anti-heroines. And we've, we've went through different seasons of storytelling where the most interesting central characters in a story were actually characters that didn't necessarily embody those characteristics of a hero that we 
typically point to. So we, we had this era, especially in the golden age of television, with Tony Soprano and with Walter White and characters like this that, in a sense, were anti-heroes. They were what we would have typically called bad guys. And yet they are the central characters in these stories that we find ourselves rooting for. So when you think about this idea of whether every protagonist is a hero, I think we have to ask ourselves, a hero to who? I think every protagonist is a hero to themselves. And that is what differentiates them from the other characters within that story. Many times we could tell the same story many, many different ways with the same characters, and who is the hero in that story will be very different. You could tell the story of Star Wars from the perspective of Darth Vader. It's a very different story about these uh, rebellions that keep popping up and challenging authority. And the rebel, this archetypal character of the rebel, well, it might be uh, a character that we point to and say, oh, that's the good guy in this story. But that same rebel character is the villain in someone else's story. So I don't think it ever becomes um, easy to point to who the uh, hero is in a story because it's all about the perspective on that story. Uh, which character is going to feel like that character is a hero, which character is going to feel like that character is a villain. But I think the unifying principle is that every protagonist, to some degree, will see themselves as a hero. Now, the last thing I'll say about this, and I think this is really important, especially in the age that we live in, we often try our best to make the world black and white without shades of gray. This, unfortunately, is just not true about the world we live in, and it's not true about us. Every single one of us has been the hero and the villain. Every single one of us has been the central protagonist and the sidekick, the mentor and the contagonist. Every single one of us has served multiple roles. And this is the truth. It's all shades of gray, depending on where we're setting at any given moment in our perspective of the story. However, the essence of storytelling comes down to one person or a group of people saying, this is how I see the world. You can agree or disagree, but I'm telling you, this is what the world looks like from where I sit. And we, as an audience, are fascinated to see a singular perspective of someone who looks at the world and says, yeah, that's what the world looks like to me too. In a sense, every great story is a mirror that the audience can look and see themselves in.